This is so weird to me. I feel like I'm doing the news. Brown cow. Me now, brown cow. I love scotch. Mm -mm -mm. Yummy in my belly. What is up guys, Jared Campisi. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a bit of a exciting video because if you haven't heard, Ducati just had their uh, 2020 world premiere where they launched all their 2020 models, one of which was the Ducati V4 Street Fighter. Um, this bike has a special place in my part for many reasons, um, one of which is because my good friend Carlin actually passed away riding this bike and um, I have decided to do a build in his honor with the new 2020 Ducati Street Fighter V4 and I thought it would be cool to kind of go over the bike today, talk a little bit about it and um, yeah, just let you guys know what I think about it. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The Street Fighter's personality is aggressive. It's a thoroughbred, and we're just learning how to tame that beast. All right, so 2020 Ducati Street Fighter V4R. Um, what is so cool about this bike? Well, as I mentioned, I am going to be doing a build series with this bike in the spring. Um, it doesn't come out until, they said March in Italy, I'm guessing probably April, May here in the States. They don't have a, a, a date yet. They don't even have a price for it yet. Um, but basically, um, I mentioned I'm going to be doing it in honor of my friend Carlin. Um, he actually was riding this bike, helping to produce and design the bike. Um, he actually wrote a prototype version of the bike. It'll be up on the screen here. And um, yeah, I mean, he was talking to me about it for months and kind of telling me about the bike and everything and how everything was going. And so, um, you know, it was just, I felt like I was a part of the project, even though obviously I wasn't. But um, yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, Carlin did pass away uh, racing up Pikes Peak. He was on pace to break the world record by like 14 seconds, something ridiculous. So um, yeah, I thought it'd be really cool to do a build um, kind of in his honor as he was a good friend of mine. Um, it's not gonna be a Carlin Dunn edition. It's just gonna be a tribute to him. Uh, we can't use the same paint scheme that Ducati used for legal reasons. Um, his name is actually trademarked, so it's not gonna be like a Carlin Dunn edition. It's just gonna be a in his honor, kind of a tribute to him. Um, I will be doing, uh, donating a percentage of the proceeds to the Carlin Dunn Foundation. And uh, if you wanna learn more about that, it will be linked in the description below. And then uh, when I do the build series, I'll be putting it in every single video. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a cool thing and I'm excited about the bike and about the project and it's gonna be special for many, many different reasons. So um, anyway, let's talk about the bike itself. So um, Ducati unveiled this and it was kind of a bombshell because for a couple of reasons. One, it's 208 horsepower uh, for a naked bike that's pretty insane I think it makes it the most powerful naked bike in history and um, if you put on the uh, Akrapovich racing full titanium race exhaust system 220 horsepower on a naked bike which is the the highest horsepower on a naked bike in history it's also Ducati's most powerful naked bike so it's really a historic bike for Ducati and just a historic bike in general Ducati's been dropping bombshells like this almost on a yearly basis, it seems. Ever since they stretched, switched to that V4, uh, we knew it was gonna be a pivotal time for their company, and um, it hasn't let us down. The V4 Panigale was incredible, uh, and I'm sure this Street Fighter is gonna be just as amazing. Um, so some of the highlights of the Street Fighter, it does have the exact same 1100cc Desmo Sedici um, motor as the regular Panigale V4. Um, it is tuned slightly different, so you're getting 208 horsepower in stock setup, whereas the V4 Panigale has 216 horsepower. I mean, it's very small amount of difference. So one of the reasons why naked bikes haven't been that this powerful in the past is um, you don't have that protection from the wind and you don't have really a way of dealing with those forces against your body. So to, being able to do, you know, 200 miles an hour on a bike without fairings, is it can be very dangerous, um, especially keeping the front wheel down and stuff like that. So one of the things they talked about a lot are these winglets and they call them the biplane winglets. So it actually has four different winglets and it was kind of inspired by their V4R winglets that you saw uh, on the V4R. And um, these winglets actually help create downforce, which helps keep that front wheel on the ground. So when you do a naked bike and you do a stripped down version of a bike, um, 
obviously you're not using clip-ons, so you don't have as much weight on the on the front of the bike. So when you tune the bike for more torque and you have your weight leaned a little bit more backwards, it, they have much more of a uh, tendency to wheelie. And Carlin talked to me about that a lot, how they were having to deal with the front end feel and, and, and trying to figure out different ways to get that feel on the front end. And um, that was one of the reasons why they did the winglets. And I think they pr produced like 28, uh, kilograms of downforce at I think it was like 167 miles an hour so that's almost 60 pounds of downforce that's almost like half of Christina sitting on your front end uh, when you're doing 160 miles an hour and again it's the high, the faster you go the more downforce that you get and um, it's pretty cool because um, that basically allowed them to keep the bike uh, with not extending the swing arm in the back and not putting the rake out too much in the front uh, as the front wheel and it allows them to have to have really good handling and still give you that good front end feel so um, it's really really cool um, they said that the front headlight was designed uh, kind of based on the Joker and it kind of has this like mean drawn down look to it I actually do think I prefer the headlight design on the prototype um, when it didn't have that LED strip running across it but nevertheless it still looks absolutely incredible plus the prototype didn't have um, the mirrors on it and also didn't have the um, the rear uh, tail fender so um, I mean it looks a lot better once you clean those things up and as you can see in the pictures on the screen I mean it it, it really is a it's a phenomenally gorgeous bike there's a sketch they have on the Ducati website of the bike and without the mirrors and the, the rear fender and, t and the tail section is um, nice and clean and it just looks so so beautiful the aftermarket parts that you can put on this thing it's just gonna make it oh my god it's gonna be ridiculous so they they're, they they basically said when they were designing this bike they used something called the fight formula so basically the desmos stradale engine uh the biplane wings uh plus the panigale v4 electronic suite which is awesome it literally has all of the electronics as the v4 panigale um it only has 178 kilograms dry weight wet weight i believe it was like 438 pounds which is pretty insane for a naked bike um, and it's got that high wide handlebar and, and obviously no fairings plus the 208 horsepower and that's what they're calling the fight formula which makes up the V4 Street Fighter. Um, it's pretty funny if you look around at the, comp at the competition, you know, Kawasaki uh, launched their new naked supercharged bike, um, has less horsepower and it's heavier than this one. Um, people say that there's, you know, the MV Gusta Oreo, I mean, that's a limited edition bike, it's $40,000, which is probably twice the amount this one's gonna cost. Um, it is, I think, like 212 horsepower or something like that. Um, but again, this that, that already comes with an exhaust on it and everything like that. So this is the the most powerful naked bike in history, um, and it has the best power to weight ratio of any naked bike on the market. And I don't know exactly what the price is gonna be right now. I'm guessing, my guess would be, the base model would be 19,000 US dollars, and then if you want to get the S model, which will give you those lightweight wheels, um, the Olin's uh, electro electronically uh, controlled suspension from the V4 uh, Panigale S model, um, probably 23,000 would be my guess for that model. Um, and it, honestly, for what you're getting, it has the full TFT five five inch screen. It has the full electronic suite. It has the the IMU controlling uh, system. It's got all the controls: the wheelie control, the traction control, the rider modes, the launch control. I mean, it really is a special bike, and it, it just it. I, I just can't stop staring at it, and I'm just I'm just really excited to get my hands on one. I've already put um, an order in for it, and um, yeah, man, it's just the, the aerodynamics package and. The fact that it, I'm not a huge fan of winglets on bikes, to be honest, especially for street riding, but when it makes sense and you're putting them on there for a reason, then I think it's it's totally cool. And, um, you know, they just did a really good job of the styling of the bike. Obviously, that's always like a huge thing when you look at motorcycles and things to buy. You want to be seen on a cool bike. You want to have fun, like, you know, customizing it. They have an awesome, you can put the dry clutch from the R on this thing. Um, it's the same full titanium Akropovich exhaust system. Um, I mean, oh man, it's such a freaking cool bike. And you can see they've got like torque and power graphs on there. Um, it actually has, I think it was like 13% more torque than the Panigale V4. Um, and um, that's that's significant because it, it already has an 1100cc motor and the Panigale V4 is already a torquey, torquey motor. So 
it's gonna be a lot of fun to ride, man. They're saying 123 Newton meters or 90, 90 foot pounds of torque and um, you know, a 208 horsepower. So yeah, I just, I think it's an awesome bike. I'm really excited for it. Ducati just keeps like upping the ante with everything they release. I think it's gonna definitely be bike of the year. I can't wait to ride it. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. You guys can read, obviously there's tons and tons of information on the Ducati website about it. I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts and feelings on the bike. Um, I think they knocked it out of the park with this thing and I cannot wait to do a build series. And um, yeah, it's gonna be really special. So that's kind of my thoughts and feelings on the bike. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the bike in the comment section below. Uh, do you think there's better naked bikes out there? Which one would you personally buy? And um, are you excited to see me do a build series with this? Um, yeah, I don't know, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Again, it's kind of a bittersweet moment for me. Every time I think about this bike, it reminds me of Carlin, and he was a good friend of mine, and uh, you know, we think about him every day. But um, it's cool you know, to have a bike that's kind of like, come out that's this impressive uh, to remember him by. So I, I mean, you know, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, man. It's a part of Ducati history and uh, my friend was a big part of that and I'm excited to kind of put my stamp on it as well uh, with a cool build series. So there you go, guys. The all new Ducati Street Fighter V4. For sure, a historic bike for Ducati and uh, one for the ages and I'm super, super excited for it. So let me, know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe for more and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.